of September lead code challenge. The problem that we have in today's best time to buy and sell stocks for. So this is the seventh problem of the best time to buy and sell stock series. In the past, we have already solved the six questions and this one is a new one. We haven't seen this question in the past. So I thought of creating this video. I know I'm pretty late, but I was quite occupied throughout the day. Just came back home around 10 p.m. and here I am in front of the laptop solving this question up for you guys. Without further ado, let's quickly try and understand the question first. It's a complicated question and trust me, I'll try my level best to explain this up. So please hear me out with a lot of patience. The question says we are given an array of prices wherein the price at the ith index represent the price on that ith day and we are also given an integer value k. What do we need to do? We need to identify the maximum profit that can be achieved by assuming that at most you can make k transactions. So you can make less transactions as well but at most, at most the upper bound of transaction count that is given to us is k. So remember this point and let's quickly move on to the presentation section. So I'll try to explain the algorithm to you. Uh, so the question says you are given the prices array and you are also given an integer value. What do we need to do? We need to identify the maximum profit that can be achieved. The question says that you at max you can perform k transactions. So you can go for less transactions as well and the upper limit of transaction count happens to be k. So this is very important that makes the question really difficult because hell lot of possibilities can be generated. So someone may say that uh, he or she will go for k minus two transactions which will give us the best result or it, there could be case that the maximum profit it is achieved at k minus one transaction or there could be a case where the maximum profit is achieved at k minus four transactions. So there are a hell lot of possibilities that can be generated. So there are two primary cases that get generated and I will not explain this algorithm by a test case because there are a hell lot of possibilities that could be generated. So I'll try and explain this question by code itself. The first case that we have happens to be the value of k is greater than or equal to n by 2. Why n by 2 is important because the maximum number of transactions that you can do in an array of size n can't be greater than n by 2. So this makes up till the first case and this is really simple and straightforward. We create a variable max profit initialize it to zero and we start the iteration starting from the ith index going up till i minus less than n and which each iteration we consider a possibility whether selling on the ith day and buying on i minus one day whatever profit we get whatever difference value we get. So this value is acting as a selling price. SP, this value is acting as our cost price. Whatever difference we are able to calculate between SP minus CP, we check if that difference happens to be greater than zero. That means it's a profitable value. It's a profit, not a loss. And we, since at max, we can make N minus two transactions. That means we have to look out for each and every profitable value that gets generated. We add it to the max profit variable and once we are out of the loop, we simply return it back. So pretty simple and straightforward. And since the value of k is greater than n by 2, that means whatever ma profits we see across this entire array, we can accumulate it and dump into the max profit variable and that will maximize the maximum profit overall that can be generated in this entire array. So this is a very simple and easy case to understand. Now let's look at the difficult one, the other side of the table. We have the local max variable created and what do we do? We pick up the maximum value of local max comma dp of i minus one j minus one. So if I ask you guys, what does this value signify? You will say that the maximum profit that can be made considering i minus one transactions can be made up till j minus one days. So exactly the same assumption that we have made over here as well. And what we are doing, we are subtracting the price of J minus one from this. Why we are doing it? So I'll explain this in some time, but let's proceed ahead with the next line first. Uh, at DP of I comma J, what we are doing? We are assuming that we are skipping the Jth day and whatever profit value we have computed one day before 
we are taking the maximum value of that which is this one considering i transactions and up till j minus 1 days so this is the first possibility of answer the other possibility of answer is local maximum variable that we have calculated over here plus the prices on that day so if i ask you guys what does this entire equation the rhs part of it reduces to you will say that something like this dp of i comma j happens to be equal to dp of i minus 1 j minus 1 this value minus prices at j minus 1 index which is this one plus prices at jf index so if you carefully analyze this is the entire equation that gets formed and if i ask you again what does this mean it means that the maximum profit that we have made up till i minus 1 transactions and j minus 1 days plus we are going to perform one more transaction and what that transaction is we are basically selling the stock on jth day and we are buying it on j minus 1 days so this is a new transaction that gets added as per this equation it may appear to you that we are always selling the stock on jth day and we are always buying the stock on j minus 1 day we haven't considered the case where we are skipping the stock on any particular day but is it actually true yes we are ha we have also considered the case where we are skipping that stock price how let's try and analyze line number lo of local maximum where we are subtracting the price of j minus one day why we are doing it so if i ask you let's look out for the dp value of i minus one j minus one the answer lies in that so let's write the equation the same equation that gets generated from dp of i comma j uh, dp of i minus 1 j minus 1 is equal to dp of i minus 2 j minus 2 that means the maximum profit that we have generated up till i minus 1 transactions and j minus 2 days and what we are doing over here we are considering a new transaction happening at j minus 1 day so since it is happening at j minus 1 day prices of j minus 1 day gets added and prices of j minus 2 gets subtracted so this is acting as my buying price so let me just write cp over here and this is acting as my sp now hypothetically let's assume we want to consider the case where we are skipping the price on j minus 1 day how are we considering it up we are basically subtracting the price of j minus 1 day when we are calculating the local max variable so this gets cancelled and when we add the prices of j into the same equation then uh, we have considered the case where j minus one day is actually got skipped and uh, prices at jth index got considered this one so this local max variable is taking care of that so if you write these equations on paper and pen then you will understand it fully i try to give a fair idea how this entire algorithm is operating and with each iteration what do we do we reset the local max variable to the minimum one so that uh, we always identify the maximum one that exists the maximum value of this entire equation that could be generated once we are out of the loop what do we do we return the value stored at the kth index comma n minus one this becomes our answer which is pretty intuitive now now let's quickly walk through the coding section it's exactly the same as i've just talked here and let's go and complete the entire algorithm up the time complexity and the space complexity of this entire approach is order of k into n and this is the first case that was stated in the presentation as well and this becomes the second case that again was stated in the presentation in the end we simply return the db value of k comma n minus one index I hope guys I made sense to you. If I do then please, please don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for viewing it. Have a great day ahead and stay tuned for more updates from Coding Decoded. We haven't missed even a single day from past 19 or 18 months whatever it is and I'm really proud of it. I hope I continue to share my knowledge with all of you and I'll see you tomorrow with the lead code uh, contest solutions. Take care till then. Goodbye.